This is free response question number three from the 2024 AP Precalculus exam. It's about modeling real world scenarios with either a sine function or a cosine function. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. The tire of a car has a radius of nine inches and a person rolls the tire forward at a constant rate on level ground as shown in the figure. Point W on the edge of the tire touches the ground at time t equals one half second. The tire completes a full rotation and the next time W touches the ground is at time t equals five over two seconds. The maximum height of W above the ground is 18 inches. As the tire rolls, the height of W above the ground periodically increases and decreases. The sinusoidal function H models the height of point W above the ground in inches as a function of time in seconds. Part A, the graph of H and its dashed midline for two full cycles is shown. Five points, F, G, J, K, and P are labeled on the graph. No scale is indicated and no axes are presented. Determine the possible coordinates t, h of t for the five points f, g, j, k, and p. First, let's figure out the maximum, minimum, and middle output values. Function h models the height of point w above the ground. w periodically touches the ground, so the minimum output value will be zero. We are told that the maximum height of W above the ground is 18 inches. So the maximum output value is 18. Halfway between 0 and 18, of course, is 9, so that will be the middle output value. We can also see that the middle value is 9 because the radius of the tire is 9 inches. We have found the output values for all five points. Now let's see if we can find the input values. We are told that point W touches the ground at time t equals one half. So we need to pick one of these low points and call it t equals one half. We can either let the input value of point J be one half, or we could put the one half way over here, or we could extend the graph by one quarter of a period and let that input value be the one half. That's what I'm going to do. This will allow me to avoid negative input values. There's nothing wrong with negative input values. They are acceptable. I just prefer positives when I can avoid negatives. After t equals one half, we are told that the tire completes a full rotation and the next time W touches the ground is at T equals five over two seconds. So the next low point will be T equals five halves. We can find the period by subtracting these two input values. Five halves minus one half is equal to four halves, which is equal to two. So the period is two. Each one of these spaces represents a quarter of the period. So if the period is equal to two, dividing both sides by four will give me one quarter of the period. Two divided by four is one half. So a quarter of the period is one half. In other words, each one of these jumps is a jump of one half. I will reduce this in a moment, but one half plus one half is two halves. If I add another one half, that will be three halves. If I add another one half, that will be four halves. And if I add another one half, I get five halves, confirming that I must be doing this correctly because five halves does land perfectly on J. Reducing two over two, we get one, and reducing four over two, we get two. Well, we still need the input values for K and P. So let's keep counting. This is five halves, this will be six halves, 
which reduces to three, and this will be seven halves. We now have all of the input values and the output values for the five points. Let's make a list. Point F is at three halves, comma, 18. Point G is at two, comma, nine. Point J is at five halves, comma, zero. Point K is at three, comma, nine. And point P is at seven halves, comma, 18. There are other correct sets of coordinates. For example, here's another one. Notice that negative values of t are acceptable. Part B, the function h can be written in the form h of t is equal to a sine b times t plus c plus d. Find the values of the constants a, b, c, and d. Let's build an expression for h of t, filling in the values of a, b, c, and d as we go along. We have memorized that the parent function y equals sine t looks like this. Let's trace this shape on h of t for comparison. I'm going to use this period of h of t to write my equation. However, you can get other correct answers by using a different period, like this one. As long as you pick a period of h of t that looks like the parent function, the a value will be the amplitude of h of t, the distance between the midline and the highest value, which is nine. So the a value is nine. I want you to memorize this formula for the b value. For sinusoidal functions, the b value is two pi divided by the period. So in this case, the b value will be two pi divided by two. That was the period which means that the b value is pi. So that's it. In the context of periodic functions, a horizontal translation is called a phase shift, and the c value will be the opposite of the phase shift. Notice that the parent function starts at zero, whereas this period of h of t starts at one. That means there has been a phase shift of positive one, which means the value of c is negative one. In short, the c value is always the opposite of the input value of the starting point, the beginning of the period that you selected. The d value always corresponds to the midline, so d is nine. On the AP exam, you can either record your answer as a function h of t with the values of a, b, c, and d filled in, or you can record your values of a, b, c, and d separately in an answer box like this. Part C, refer to the graph of h in part A. The t coordinate of k is t1, and the t coordinate of p is t2. So T1 is here and T2 is here. C part one, on the interval from T1 to T2, which of the following is true about H? Is H positive and increasing, positive and decreasing, negative and increasing, or negative and decreasing? The interval from T1 to T2 is this interval right here. On this interval, the output values are positive they are between positive nine and positive 18. Also, h of t is increasing on this interval because from left to right, the values are rising. So h of t is positive and increasing on the interval from t1 to t2. So the answer is A. C part two, describe how the rate of change of h is changing on the interval from t1 to t2. We have learned that if h of t is concave up, the rate of change is increasing, and if h of t is concave down, the rate of change is decreasing. On the interval from t1 to t2, h of t is concave down. Therefore, the rate of change is decreasing. It's probably safest to answer with a single word. Just say decreasing. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.